News. This is KTN News. Welcome back to the leading and authoritative news channel that is at KTN News and of course the best show in East Africa that is Hashtag Youth Cafe as led by at Brian underscore Sally. The conversation is very simple. Should weed be legalized in Kenya? What are your reasons? The hashtag is Youth Cafe as I said earlier on. Right about now we're going to slide deeper. I'm going to introduce uh, my panel right now. It's a panel of gentlemen right here right now and of course we have Power Towel. Uh, T Towel. Oh Jesus Christ. Powell Tower. Hey, our on your junior. <laughs> he's in the building right now, and of course, he's a spoken word artist and a student. And of course, on, on my extreme left is Isaac Wangai, who's a counselor and also a pastor. Karibu sana. Thank you. It's not the first time that you're being here. Should it be legalized or not? Not. <laughs> Why? Uh, because we, number one, because of the risks involved, mm -hmm. we, can, we cannot afford to um, to subject our children especially mm -hmm. to the risk of um, having it legalized. In the mm -hmm. sense, um, you cannot control mm -hmm. the amount of intake, uh, and especially now that those guys that plant it, you cannot again, you cannot never know who gets it and who does not get it. True. Yeah. Paul, talk to us and tell us, what do you think should happen? Should it be legalized? I think I have a different view from that. Mm -hmm. uh, we can actually control it mm -hmm. uh, with the draft bill right now that is going on where we can actually register the, the growers and the producers. We look at it from an economic point of view mm -hmm. because we have alcohol legal, tobacco legal, and uh, economically it's bringing us something. Okay. So I'm um, more on the economy than the health part of it. What are you doing? The conversation is just starting. And of course, right now, if you look at your TV screens, they, uh, there is actually information about some of the countries that have legalized weed. Just take a look at that, and uh, we get exactly to know which countries have legalized weed. Of course, Jamaica is on the list. <laughs> We're not even going to argue uh, with that. And of course, look at uh, we have Canada, which uh, actually legalized this week. The United States of America in some parts. It's actually not in all uh, uh, parts of the United States of America. Uh, it's in Oregon, Washington, and California. And when you go to Mexico, actually, we can't do much with those guys because they're also struggling with cocaine. Costa Rica, which is a very small nation that was actually hit by an earthquake early on this year, legalized it. Jamaica is there, and of course, they have a new Miss Jamaica this week. Colombia, mm -mm -mm. Pablo Escobar, that's my remark on the same. Argentina, which is also one of the South American countries. Ecuador uh, is also on the list. And the list is endless, man. Ebu, tell me, two of those nations are key donors to Africa. So I'm going to start it from that perspective. In that, they decide what kind of donations are going to come to Africa. That is Canada and the United States of America. Do you think that these nations can be able to control uh, uh, some of the things that we actually uh, push and put in our bills and draft it to the Senate or something like that? Can, can they actually push these notions further? If they decide to retract their, their, their donations, do you think that they can actually force us to actually make it a cash crop? Yes, they can. You see, now the problem, the biggest problem we have with um, the kind of uh, legal structure that we have mm -hmm. is that it is not um, uh, specific enough, or the enforcement of it mm -hmm. is a bit weak as far as um, as far as uh, drug abuse, and especially now this bang we are talking about, or mm -hmm. marijuana that we are talking about, is concerned. Mm -hmm. In those countries, um, their legal structures are better. In other words, they are able to enforce, like he said, we can be able to control um, to whom it is sold and, and all those kinds of things. But the problem with Africa is our um, government structure and, uh, and, and legal framework does not give us um, enough enforcement uh, practice for mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So ideally, what... what um, what the problem would be is that they can, uh, the Western countries 
or now Canada and USA, mm -hmm. they can be um, they can force us to make it a cash crop. Uh, and I, I don't think because Africa is fertile and it's the homeland of all resources. Tawa, oh, na my story legalize you. Why do you think it should be legalized? Don't you think it's more a hazard, like Isaac has said? And and of course, ba basically, it might be one of the things uh, that's going to salvage us economically because probably we have so much debt around uh, revolving around the country. But what the effects, man? Addiction stuff come here. And remember that. Uh, we have 85% of Kenya's population is made up of youth, and 90% of these 85 uh, uh, percent are jobless. Talk to me about the same. Exactly. That's why I looked at it from an economic point of view. Uh, we have dwelt so much on the negative aspect of weed that we have forgotten that it is actually beneficial. Uh, a research conducted uh, states that you can actually remove the uh, the component that actually brings weed to that. Uh, aspect of craziness, if I may put it that way. Mm -hmm. The rest of it can be used medicinally and, uh, as you said, as a cash crop, so that we can actually uh, sell out to pay our debts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> basically. Sell out to pay our debts. There's something that happened yesterday. When uh, Canada legalized its weed, they ran out of stock. <laughs> they ran out of stock. Is there a craving? It's not only in, in Canada. In, in South Africa, it's also the same. Do you think it's really coming closer home? And, and don't you think there's a crave and that urge? And what are we going to do with that crave and urge, especially amongst the youth? Um, primarily, the reason why you'd see such a scenario is because uh, when something is restrained, mm -hmm. immediately you make it accessible to everyone, everyone rushes into it. Mm -hmm. So there's not necessarily a, 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 what I would call a scientifically proven mm -hmm. uh, craving for, for, for weed. Mm -hmm. It's just that now the law has allowed. No, and, you know, and now which, it's, being do, it's being done as um, le it's a leisure product now. Yeah. Because... Earlier on, it was actually accepted medicinally, like you've said. It kills the cancer cells. That's why I think one of the MPs in Kenya actually uh, tried to push a bill. Kenokoth. Yeah, yeah Kenokoth yeah. tried to push that. And of course, we looked at the headlines in the Kenyan newspaper, like I said, 64 MPs are suffering from cancer. Do you think that's why it's being pushed? I don't think so. <laughs> I, I really don't think so. I've actually... I, I, Recently, I was, I was trying to look at um, his, his points. He mm -hmm. has four points, main mm -hmm. points, why he wants uh, it legalized. And one of the points which he actually banks on is his point on the economic sense of it. Then the question would be, looking at the risks involved, mm -hmm. which one is better? You legalize it and you mess up our young people, or you let it pass and we look for other means of, of, of paying our debt. Mm -hmm. Because we can actually pay our debt by not borrowing. We can, we, can, we can look at other means. Africa is endowed economically. We, mm -hmm. we, are one of, we are actually the richest mineral endow, endowed uh, continent mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. It therefore means that we have enough resources to, um, to take care of our economic needs mm -hmm. that don't necessarily mm -hmm. have to include messing up young people. Because mm -hmm. the problem, my biggest problem is mm -hmm. controls. You cannot control the intake. Actually, like he's saying, mm -hmm. that you can remove the, the addictive, um, whatever, uh, mm -hmm. whatever you need. Um, mm -hmm. You can control it. Mm -hmm. The problem is, what about in those villages? Mm -hmm. What about to high school students? I was at the university uh, several years ago, mm -hmm. and the kind of mess that thing is doing to university students mm -hmm. is untold. Okay, earlier on in the week, we had a conversation with the researcher. His name is Ogot Gwada. And of course, we had an opportunity to just talk to him. He had a couple of things to say, and that's what is going to actually lead our conversation. Take a look at your TV screens and get to listen to what this researcher had to say. Kenya should develop her own policy on marijuana based on the value of the plant, amongst others. And it is for this reason that I filed a petition uh, because in my culture, marijuana has been used as medicine since time immemorial and based on biblical edict. In my language, we call marijuana yath. In my mother tongue, we call it omsala, which both mean medicine. And I, s I have noted a cultural conflict in the town. 
culturally, is it accepted? I think we're going to ask that culturally. Do you think it's been criminalized in that, by the way, when you're born, you ascribe to the cultures of your people? And of course, it's hard. That's what people ascribe to. But if you're, they were born freely, uh, do you think it would, have been, it would have been different? I think it would have been different because uh, I usually I give examples of alcohol and tobacco. Mm -hmm. People have grown in homes where drinking is, is legal, but it's messing up the youth, it's messing up grown ups. Uh, same applies to weed. If anything is just too much of it is poisonous. Mm -hmm. If actually controlled, it can actually be beneficial, as the professor said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you think if cultures would allow it, it would be a good thing as well? Yeah, it but, wouldn't be. But their cultures, let's talk about this culture, it's the Rastafarian culture. They actually have legalized it and they actually praise it through music. And you know, it's more like a spiritual yeah. culture. Yeah. So if we talk to us about the same, do you think that if probably, uh, if, if weed would have been decriminalized, all these other cultures would have actually taken it in? Let me give an example with Jamaica. Jamaica is one of the nations with the highest level of crime. Mm -hmm. And I would attribute that also to um, the amount of drug abuse that is in that nation. Mm -hmm. So um, now Rastafarianism finds its roots in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. That is where they have, they have pushed for it um, mm -hmm. or they do it um, freely. Mm -hmm. So uh, why I would, I would be very hesitant to, to ask or to have that to have weed mm -hmm. legalized is um, now for such kind of as a nation mm -hmm. with the kind of temperatures we have right now in that place, mm -hmm. it does not give good credence for us to adopt that. But don't a, we still have uh, high rates of, of, of crime, crime in the country? Yes. And we talk to us about this. Do you think weed actually can make you become a, uh, it can actually make you a violent person? I don't think so because uh, legal or no, not. No, no, una to make it. I tell you, legal or not, uh, crime is still there. Mm -hmm. We can't actually attach crime to drug and substance abuse. Mm -hmm. Drug and substance abuse is brought about by maybe neglect or. Um, uh, rejection, uh, some other factors that we don't put into consideration mm -hmm. and actually attach it to crime. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think we can actually do that. Mm -hmm. We so can't. It's a, it's a... Actually, 